smart and intelligent vehicles are coming up fast. We even reviewed some of the self-driving, some of the autonomous functions on some of the channels. Click the link above if you want to see some of those. While this kind of glamorous kind of cars can drive themselves is important, we need to address serious active passive safety features of these vehicles. How do we react in emergency situations? Not can they just drive around corners and drive to the destination themselves, but when the S hits the fan, will your car make sure you are safe and those around you on the road are safe as well? You may have seen a test done recently by Dong Chidi, which is a very famous Chinese platform that puts all of the big vehicles up against each other. Actually, Tesla topped the list of this Dong Chi D, so congrats for that. But many brands are not really happy with the conditions of this test. So today I'm here at a NEO proving ground to test its ADAS features and see if your car needs to navigate a serious emergency situation, will it do the right thing? Can it keep you safe in the event of an emergency? So let's get into it. Uh, this test we're about to do is uh, going to be engaging NOP, so that's navigation uh, on pilot. So this is basically uh, NEO's uh, self-driving uh, system and it's going to be a high speed maneuvering around some kind of like roads under construction so we're going to see how it does this so it's going to be 120 kilometers an hour and it's going to be navigating around some road under construction which is something which is very common uh, especially in china so you notice that the driver's not they're not going to be driving this he's just going to have his hands here and we've got some traffic cones up ahead so we're going to go down the highway we're hitting 80, around 80 kilometers an hour. Let's watch, okay, slight braking and easy navigating around. It's very important we don't brake too much if we're going high speed, there could be cars all around us. All right, so second test is, is GOA, uh, General Obde Object Avoidance. So here we go. So he's gonna purposely go towards the central barrier. All right, good. So we're heading right for that barrier. So we're gonna go left again and there's gonna be someone crossing the road with their umbrella on their head. And we're gonna make sure we don't... All right, so we did stop uh, abruptly. Uh, good, a good meter or so in front of them. So they are safe. Okay, so now we're gonna do a um, double, a double kind of uh, challenge, which is gonna be tunnel darkness and uh, smoke as well so kind of like fog or whatever inside a tunnel so this is gonna uh, have to see the object very late well obviously it's gonna have lidar and its sensors to be able to see through the fog and break before we hit the object that is in front of us so let's see how it does so we're gonna go up to around 65 70 and the fog is out ahead and i can see but it's difficult to see through the fog so we're going we're going we're going and Yes, okay, so we stopped with probably two, three meters uh, of, of, of room. So stopped very comfortably in front of that. So all good here. All right, so next we've got an automatic uh, emergency steering and uh, it's an interesting one. It's so, a, a child lying on the street. I thought this is a bit of a weird situation, but then I thought I've probably seen this quite a few times uh, in China anyway. Um, so it's actually quite quite a common situation. So, you know, kids playing on the street, they don't really understand how dangerous the, the roads are. So this one, we're going to be going 80 kilometers an hour and we're going to have to navigate around this fake child who's sitting on the street. So let's see how we do here. Here they're coming up. All right, so we actually did it at 90. The horn you hear is actually an automatic horn, which is the car letting you letting anyone that might be there know that it's going to be coming over to the right and it's an emergency. You need to you need to be careful. But it's very interesting to think about how can they judge the best possible outcome for these emergency scenarios and how how the car reacts in the best possible way to make sure you know you know the best possible outcome. So the next test is actually a triple test, you might say. So we're going to be going 90 to 100 and we're not going to be avoiding one, but three objects at the same time. So we're going to have a person and then, and then there's going to be a car and then there's going to be a two wheel vehicle. So that'll be a motorbike or a bicycle or an electric bike. So this is not three tests. This is one test. So as soon as it avoids one, the next one is going to appear and it's going to have to avoid that. So this is basically three tests combined into one. Let's see how it goes through this kind of obstacle, this slalom of different objects. So he's not going to be holding, he's going to be holding 
holding it very gently and he's going to let the car do the obstacle avoidance so you notice that the wheel will move without him doing anything. Okay, so I would say that is a success. Uh, we were able to navigate around the three objects. We didn't lose control. The car did the driving and it can recognize people. It can recognize vehicles. It can recognize two wheeled vehicles. So like bikes and electric scooters. Okay, so we have one more test today, which is what it would usually be the if you pass out or if you're incapacitated while you are driving your car. However, we don't have the space for this today so we're going to make the system the same the result will be the same but we're going to do we're going to take the seatbelt off and we're not going to touch the steering wheel when the car reminds us to so this means that the car will you know maybe there's something wrong maybe there's an issue the car will remind you remind you remind you and if you still continue to ignore it it will go to one side and stop uh, at the side of the road so let's see how this does we don't have a huge amount of space here. We've probably got maybe 400 meters. So we're going to have to make sure that the car starts to react as quickly as possible so we can see this feature. So we're going to go into NOP, so the self-driving mode. We're going to just take in his seatbelt off now. The car's telling him he needs, to, he needs to hold the steering wheel because we're going fast, you need, to, you need to direct. And now it started merging to the right, and which obviously in China is towards the hard shoulder. And merging again. And... We are going over to the hard shoulder where we will be stopping. And then it will also uh, activate the SOS as well when you stop. So we're calling the SOS. So we just called the SOS and actually someone answered. So that was super quick. So that shows the response times of uh, the SOS team. So it, it understands, the car understands there's an emergency situation and it reacts accordingly. Okay, how do you think these cars handled these situations? Which of these do you think was the most standout? And which brand do you think is the strongest when it comes to things like autonomous driving, active, passive, safety features. Make sure you let us know in the comments below. Be sure to give us a like and a subscribe. I'll see you next time.